Now let's take a look at how to create this lovely little teapot here. So I'm going to start with a brand new file, but we are going to jump into a resource file later on. So I'll press control N. And the key thing that I want to say right this minute is remember that plasticity is very much in development. This is plasticity 0.5.41. Things will break. And please, please go through all of the videos beforehand before you jump into this one. If not, you'll get lost. and You don't know how to deal with plasticity when things break. Remember, there's the feedback, Discord, and all sorts of links down in the description and the top pin comment. So what I want to show you here before we jump into the resource file is how to sort of create a sketch on a plane that isn't this plane without creating geometry. To do that is pretty simple. You can either click on the numpad, which is one, three, and seven to go to all those views. So if we press one here, you will now move to that be able to do that. Okay. But if you don't have a numpad, you can also just click on the cube here, which will take you to that plane as well. Alternatively, if you don't want to go into those planes at all, you can turn on the construction planes. For instance, here we'll turn on the YZ one, and now we can just sketch directly onto the YZ plane. Okay, now that we've covered that, I want to now open up the little resource file. The file is down in the description. It is a Gumroad link. Just put in a zero in there, and that's how you're going to be able to get this file to follow along. So we're going to go and open the resource file, which is Project 6 Raw. I'm doing this because I want to make this video much quicker. You already know how to do this because you've gone through all the other videos. All it is is curves, trimming, and filling. It's really nice and simple. I'll come to one mention about this later on, but don't worry about it. Okay, so here we go. With this, we're able to make absolutely everything. We're going to select this curve here, and there's a new operation down here, which is the revolve. We're going to click it, and then it's going to say, which axis do you want to revolve around? It is the Z. So this is a two click, just like the rotation. So click once, click again, and there we have it. Now, this little tool here, this is does thickness and all sorts of other random stuff. In all honesty, I haven't found it that useful just yet. So I'm going to right click to confirm that and we already have the body. So let's talk about this handle now. I'm going to click the handle curve. We're going to zoom on into it and there's a lovely little operation to here. We're going to go down here to the pipe operation, shortcut P. So I'm going to press P. I'm going to select the little round one here and I'm going to put in 3.5. I could also put it in down in here. Okay, the other ones here, this is the ones that do thickness and it is thickness inwards and outwards because it's creating an actual pipe with a hole through it. We're going to play with that a little bit later on in a different project. Anyway, I'm happy with that. I'm going to right click and confirm that. And I am just wanting to get these faces though a little bit further in just so that I can boolean them in later on. So I'll press shift H to see only what I have selected here. Then I'll press three, select this face, select this face, and just pull them out a little bit like so. Right click to confirm, bring everything back with alt H and see if that's intersecting nicely. It is this one. Is it just about doing it? Maybe not. So let's do that once again. Just want to make sure I don't want to go too far because remember this is a kettle. So I will be a teapot, sorry. So that means it's going to be hollow eventually. Okay, so that is that one there. So if you're wondering how I got that face and this planes and that orientation, all that, remember you can select the face and then press space. That's how I went and started doing these drawings. It's as simple as that. That is the construction plane of that face. Okay, so why do I have all these here and what does this mean I can do? Well, we're going to go in two into edge selection and the order does matter here. We're going to select this one, then this one, then this one. And one of the beautiful things of working with NURBS is lofting. So let's go here with a loft of L. We'll click it. It has lofted. You can do thickness as well here, but I'm not going to bother with that. I'm just going to right click. I'm happy with that. That's exactly what I want. And then I'm going to press H to hide it all away. So now with that hidden, I can see there's a face back here. I'll press three, select that face. And I'm just going to extrude this out into there so that it's clipping into my other solid object. Brilliant. Right click. I am happy with that. So now let's turn this, well, into that lovely teapot. Let's press number four, select our base, then select our spout. Press Q, Q once again, 
to join it together. Right click to confirm that and there we have it. So let's add some thickness to this, right? So I'm gonna press three for face selection. I'm gonna select this top face here and the face of the spout. And you'll see down here, we have shell thickness. So let's click that. And now we'll have this nice little tool that lets us add the thickness outwards and inwards. I'm gonna go minus two, which is exactly what I'm wanting here. I'm happy with that. I'll right click and confirm that and there it is. So now that we're at this point, I think it's time to select our nice little handle here. So I'm gonna select the teapot first, then I'll select the handle, press Q, Q, and Q once again, come on, there it is, and I'll right click to union that away. Okay, so I think we've got most of this done. Let's go and add some bevels to this, I guess, and then we'll do the lid. So I'll press two, then I'll select the edge here. I'm gonna press Alt Z as well to turn off my X-ray for a moment, and I'll select this one here. I'm gonna set this to 0.9, because I find that if I go one, that breaks it. It's just the nature of the beast currently. I'm happy with that. Right click, confirm that. I'm gonna select this edge here. Let's see how far I can pull this. I think it's a good 10 that I can pull this. I'm happy with that there. Right click to confirm that. Let's go over to this edge over here. I'll select this bottom edge here. And remember that these are all tangent because it's a circle so that we don't have to select them all. And I'm gonna pull this out. I think the number for this one was six. Brilliant. Now there is a little thing that I wanna mention here that it's not a good project to show you, but if we press V, this gives us, look, add variable fillet points. So you can snap to some places on here. Let's see if we can find one on here that we can snap to. Did I press a V? Um, I did. So there is an edge along here. So I'll find that point, click it on one of these. Oh wait, sometimes when things like this happen is because you actually do need it all selected. It's this variable fillet can sometimes go a little bit weird. So that's why I don't want to really bring it up just yet. So I'm just going to go for a little bit like that. I'll press V now, and then I'll select a point here. And then this lets me do a variable fillet. So as you can see, this is quite powerful stuff. Just be aware that it is a tool out there. Okay, so I'm just going to now fillet this away to the amount of six, I think is what I decided to go with. Yeah, I'm going with that six right there. I wonder if I can go a little bit bigger on this distance here. So I can crank this up here. I'll crank that to eight. Yeah, that's a good amount. So that's what I'm wanting to achieve there. Yep, right click. I'm happy with that. I'm gonna select this one here and I'm gonna crank this one all the way up. Oop, the other direction, gonna go, uh, how far can I go before it breaks? Maybe I'll go for nine. I'm quite happy with nine there. Right click and there we have that handle. So you know what? That is pretty much the teapot done. Let's go and do that lid. So four, select it, then we'll hide it away and let's do the lid. It's pretty much the exact same workflow. We're gonna select it here. We're gonna do that revolve once again on the Z. I'm happy with that. Right click to continue. Let's do a loft for that little handle bit here. So I'll select this, select that, select this, then we'll press L for lofting. Happy with that. Right click to confirm. I'm going to select just this, press shift H to just hide all the rest. Press three, select this face, select this face and pull them down just a little bit. Okay, now that I'm happy with that, right click to confirm that. Press Alt H to show everything once again. I'll press four, I'm gonna select the lid, then I'll select the handle, I'll press Q and Q once again, and now we have a nice Boolean union right there. Okay, I don't need any more of the curves now, so let's hide them all away. I just wanna add some nice little bevels here. So I'll select this one here, select this one here. Let's go for a bevel here of two. That is exactly what I'm wanting. Right click to confirm, and there you have that lovely little teapot by just 
using those curves there, which you already know how to make. You can imagine just how powerful this can be and how quickly it is. So once again, just a quick refresher in case you've forgotten to add your how to add materials. So let's turn on the materials here. Remember, turn four for object selection. Select this object, then you can press M. And here we can change the materials individually of each of these. And of course, this is set to metal. So I'm going to set this to 0.1. And let's also change the IOR a little bit. So I'm going to go down to about, I think, 0.5. That's good. So we've got 0.1 and 0.5 and somewhere like that. And then I'll select this lid. Do the same. Press M to get to it. It was uh, 0.1, I think it was what I set up to. And then this was 0.5. And then I'm going to change this to whatever color I feel like setting there. There we go. Right click to confirm. And there you have it. Now, if you want to share what you're making or get a little bit of help with plasticity, you can join the MakerTales Discord where I have a plasticity channel right there. Or you can try and join the plasticity Discord. And information for that will be down in the description or in the top pinned comment where I'll be keeping that as up to date as possible. If you're enjoying what I'm making here and you think I'm worthy of your support, you can join this lovely group of esteemed people, my lovely patrons. Thank you so very much. And a big thank you to my VIP makers, Jem Oskinacht and David Fernandez. It really means the world to me. Thank you for watching, keep making, and let the quest continue.